Hello and welcome back to the workshop. Hopefully, if this project has gone okay, you will have just seen a little short clip of the finished product and now you're going to join me and follow through for the entire build video of this curved cabinet. It's really important when you're doing any sort of curved work or project that you're not really sure about or it's a bit intricate that you've got a, a nice one-to-one -one drawing to uh, work from and take references from. So you want to get a, a plan drawing that is really accurate. These things are called trammel heads, pretty handy for setting out any form of curve. You can just make yourself a little baton of any length and clamp them to it and then uh, attach a pencil. Stab the other end in the reference hole of the centre of your curve. You've always got that length for a reference and it will give you your, your true curve to work from. Very handy tool for finding the centre and set a gauge line from that side go from the same point on the other side I get a couple of crosses and the centre of the cross is the centre strike line of my doors. Drawn the cupboard out in full scale. The outer edge of the former is to be the on the innermost edge of this curve. And then I've got to work out what I want to cut my former pieces or the ribs of the former, less the material that I'm going to put on top of it. It'll be about 12 mil thick, the actual surface of the former. So I've got to come in from that measurement, 12 mil, and that'll be the outer cut on the former pieces. So I've got 10 pieces here. Now that I've got these, I'm going to put the curve on them all. So I'm going to cut them out on the bandsaw. So I just marked the two points at which the ends of the cut were. So I'll find the centre of them. So that's 27, 26, sorry. Strike that through the centre of the drill hole. And then strike that through there. Should give me two square lines to work from. I can then measure this bit here, or from this point. Now then, let's put that line on there. That is the back of these slats, so when I put that slat on there, that is the line that I'm going to hold them to. Need to find a centre line on each board, so that's 360. So we can put them together. Here we go.
I've cut this backing board to the width of the former pieces and it is the height of the cabinet or just slightly over the height of the cabinet and I'm just screwing the backing pieces or the former pieces through the board at even spacings so that they are all in line, all nice and square and all supported by the backing board. I'm going to put one rib in each end. It should stop the ends being pulled in. fabric has to touch the former so that the air can has a pass from the valve to the former. I've just set the pump I've not set it to full pressure because it's pulled them cheats around really easily. So they're all nice and tight together all the way around that arc. So I've eased the pressure up a little bit because what I don't want to get is ripples in the uh, sheet in here. So that vacuum pump off is just applying atmospheric pressure all over. So where there's a, a gap between the spacing ribs, it will actually pull them sheets in to that gap as well. I'm just going to show you the accuracy that that sort of that machine can work to. Okay, so right on the end there, 34.2. Centre of the boards, 34.2. And at the far end, bearing in mind this is over 12 boards wide, 34.2 squeezed together. Apparently you can actually buy veneers in the three mil strips. It's called constructional veneer. So if you haven't got a wide belt, that might be a good option. What we've ended up with is something that we can bend and when glued together should hold its shape. It doesn't look like that bag is applying much pressure but it makes the tape really difficult to peel off. We'll start peeling it off. Time to glue the first rails up of the frame. 
Now, I've already tried this once and I've had an absolute disaster with it. So this is actually take two. So I'm going to use about 200, 250 grams of this resin. First of all, couldn't get the bag to pull the timber around the form without sucking under the between the two pieces. And then I uh, got over that issue and then left it long enough to, that I thought it had gone off, left it overnight. So it was about 16 hours, the liquid resin glue. It should, should be gone off in about four hours. So I took it out in the morning. It didn't spring at all. It looked absolutely perfect. I was well chuffed with myself. Put another piece in the bag, got that glue in so it's going off. Then went back to start working on the piece that I glued up and sat it on my drawing that I'd drawn out and it didn't fit. It sprung open by about 20 mil at each side. Now I did film all this. In the process of gluing up, I actually managed to knock my camera. It must have snapped the little audio jack that the microphone plugs into, so I've got no audio for it. So it was a failed attempt. Yeah, I don't think the, 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 it was the right hardener for the glue when I contacted the manufacturer. So they very kindly sent me out some more hardener just to check that that was okay. And this is take two. And we've got also this rather cool little glue applicator. So I've splurged a bit of cash on this. So you pull your glue in the top like a hopper, pull the lever, and that engages the rubber wheel against the metal wheel, and then dispenses the glue. And then if you pull the lever back, you can then roll the glue out evenly. Using the, using the rubber roller without adding any more glue on. So it's quite a cool bit of kit from Foal, made in Germany. So you're seeing a genuine first time use. This bad boy. Ripping. I'll tell you what, that is worth every penny. What a tool. What a bit of kit. Oh, oh look at this. Oh my days. Okay, let's rip this down the middle and then get the angle of interception for the uh, joint of the rail to these upright pieces. Right, so I've just shot the inside edges of them curved uprights on the planer. In theory, if we put them together, the arc of the two pieces should make a pretty true curve around the outside diameter, which it does. It looks beautiful. I'm not going to worry too much about cleaning this outside edge off. I might get it square, but I'm going to leave... That's meant to be 50 mil, and it's currently... 58 mil, 60 mil. So I want to leave that a bit longer so I've got some room to scribe it into the corner. We've got about 15 minutes maximum. 
to get this in the mould. I have fun to do the frame with a domino joint. I thought it'd be good practice to, on the, for the doors to do the frame with a scribe as well. The tenoner is set up so on that shoulder point there, the face is um, the perfect height. So I've set up this little jig to hold the pieces, the curved pieces or the curved rails, so that the spring point of the curve when it exits this jig, it's flush with this bed here. So if you put the curve on and put it true to this piece, it will touch, touch the bed when it's clamped to that and then start to rise off. And I've measured that spring point and worked it back 100 mil. And I know where the, the center of the joint is here from this shoulder. So I'm just gonna measure back 100 mil on here. Take the combi square transfer that 100mm line over. Now you might think it's a bit rough, I've left the screw heads pointing out, but I wanted the screws to thread right through that piece so it got a nice tight uh, fixing through the whole lot rather than just have the screws tip in the bit of wood and you don't get a very strong fixing. So I can square that line down there. I can put that onto my 100 mil line. We go, we should have a nice even clamping piece now. Now then, that didn't go disastrously wrong. Right? So it will sit something like that on the piece. So I can quite accurately pre-cut this shoulder so I don't get any break out from the 45 degree taper. There we go, that looks pretty good for this time. The glue is absolutely rock hard. Unlike last time where it's still a tiny bit tacky. I mean the glue that I used in the first glue up is still very, very slightly tacky in the pot. Whereas this one is rock hard. So the first one failed because of the glue hardener was the wrong hardener. So that's a little bit annoying, especially when it's the first time using the tool you don't know what you've done wrong but uh, at least we've solved the problem and can crack on now if i put that on the outer surface of the frame and the drawing there we go so 
don't know if you can see, but we're catching the inside of the frame here perfectly. The door sits in 5mm all the way around, so even in the centre here. Ever focus. Sitting in nicely 5mm and on the same on this end. So we've got a nice true curve now, which is good. Okay, so that worked out better than I expected it to be. So I've now got two matching rails with tenons on and a scribe. Pretty pleased with that. Joints are nice, seems to travel around the curve nice. So I've just got to put this bevel on the uprights for the scribe to seat over and we can have a look at the assembled frame then.
Right, let's have a look at assembling it. Oh, I'm so excited. Very happy with that. She's a honey. It's on this joint down here. Um, it does go up pretty nicely. It's a little bit tight on the bevel. I think when it's in the form and you've, you're wedging it, because it's going to push outwards, it's going to push the tenon, and that will, will wedge up. I'll have a dry run of that just to check that joint. What I've done on the uh, top side, this is the underside to where the little plinth will be. And obviously where there's the tenon joint, you might have an opportunity of seeing um, down the gap of the tenon. So what I do on the top side is just uh, cut a little relief. So I've cut like a, a tiny little two mil shoulder on the tenon. So it's a setback on the tenon. And then you cut a shoulder across to the flat of the rail so if I just pull that slightly apart you should be able to see what I'm talking about. So the tenon's cut back and then there's a shoulder so you just see this nice clean shoulder line mating with the uh, upright. That should give me a good reference here for a square top rail. I can tell if it's raised or you know slightly out of cant. That should be a good reference to keep it square and likewise the bottom rail as well. I've got wedges in the four corners at the joint positions to hold it down to the former. I'm going to put a clamp with a batten across the top down to the bench to stop the middle springing up so when I drive the folding wedges in to tighten the joints up it's obviously going to try and spring out in the middle so I've got a uh, batten to clamp down there to hold that I've got my panel in the middle to hold it square so I can judge where this rail wants to sit in terms of uh, getting that rail so that when it's in the kitchen and the two styles are vertical that is nice and flat on the horizontal so that's quite important got a couple of little blocks handy with some screw holes in to hold that so if once I've glued it up it wants to sort of spring one way or the other it seems to be sitting pretty nicely at the minute if I need to put a screw block in to hold that I've got them ready other than that I think we're pretty good to go I mean, it looks like absolute chaos, but it seems to have worked. Joint seems nice and tight. It's got about the right sort of gap 
around the former. Like I say, joints have got up nice. It's nice to get a proper tenon in there instead of dominoing that joint. Uh, Mould's nice and protected from the glue. And we follow this panel around, which is my square opening size. That's pretty nice too. So we've got a nice square line down here. And the same on the top. Cool. I'm glad that's done. It's currently Friday afternoon. It's about 3.30. I'm going to site tomorrow. I'm meant to be fitting this cabinet, but it's taken a lot longer than I thought it would. I had a few problems along the way as well. Hopefully, this afternoon I can crack on, make a, the basic carcass that it's gonna sit with, take that out, get it sanded up, and then screw it to the carcass, and I can take that tomorrow and fit it in place because the granite templators are coming on Monday to template up so if I can get the basic cabinet sat in position I've got the next week basically to finish this cabinet and that should be it that should be us done fingers crossed we can get this done this afternoon so luckily the drawing is full scale so it should be dead easy to take measurements from I need two upright pieces I'll take the measurements off of this drawing for the two lengths and then I just need a couple of curved bits, so the bases of the unit. I'm going to put one top and bottom to give both rails support. This is just a dry assembly, I'm not going to sand anything just yet. It's going to be get a carcass together to check it's all correct.
beautiful. Gaps. So there's a little, little, little gap here. So I think what I need to do with that one is I'll mark it out now before I take it to bits, sand everything. Just take a little bit off there, and then the upright piece. Probably wants half a mil off all the way up. This side at the top is pretty much perfect. By the time I've put some pocket hole screws in the uprights on the back, that'll be clean. To be fair, the bottom, again, probably wants the tiniest little half a mil off of there, and then perhaps half a mil planing off the upright piece, tapering to nothing at the top. But for a dry fit, I'm pretty pleased with that. I just sat it on the template so that uh, I've set everything out from and it's pretty good. I mean it's sat right on the outside skin there. It's, it's a mil longer, a mil bigger this side and again it's about one mil bigger this side so I've got a little bit wayward of the lines. I'm going to cut myself a little break on that. I'm, I'm pretty pleased now it's all turned out. I think I'm going to make that the end of this video, it's probably going to be quite a long one. We will pick up with another video with me making the doors for this. So my friend that's done a few of these curved cabinets, uh, Ben, so hi Ben if you're watching, he's advised me that normally if you make your doors first, because if you get any spring as they come off the mould, you can just tweak your frame to sort of suit the doors how much spring they get as they come off the mould, whereas if you make your frame and your carcass dead set and your door spring as they come off, you've got to try and fit a door that is the wrong radius into a, into a frame. So a bit of good advice from here is make the doors first and then tweak the carcass to suit the doors. So I've still got that option. I doubt they're going to spring a huge amount that's going to affect the granite template. I mean, you could move it a couple of mil here or there and you wouldn't even notice it on the template. So. I think I'll be okay. Like I say, if I do get a bit of spring, I can always sort of taper this this circle in here, or or otherwise to uh, suit the doors. But yeah, if, you, if you're planning on making one, and I think a good advice there is to start with the doors first, and then make the frame after. If you made it this far, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. It really helps other people discover each video and leave a comment as well if you've got any questions. I've got a 100% record of replying to comments at the minute, so see if you can try and catch me out.